So students, we finished learning the meaning of rural development and we also learned the importance of rural development. Now let's learn the next concept, the concept of decentralization. Students, so what is decentralization? First, let me explain to you what is centralization. When power is limited in the hands of a few, it is called centralization. When power is distributed in various layers in the society, it's called decentralization. In decentralization, the problems that are local in nature are managed by local bodies. For example, if there's garbage thrown outside of my house, I don't have to go and approach the state government. I can just approach the municipality or the local government where I live to resolve it. This distribution of administrative power, this concept is decentralization. So providing administrative power and the responsibility of developing the village to people themselves is called decentralization. Extremely important definition from examination point of view. It is a process through which power sharing occurs and people will participate in decision making. It is also a process that aims at planning and development from below. So the grassroots of society plan and solve their own problems. For example, if there, is, if there are so many wells and lakes that are dried up in Maharashtra, their situation may be very different from lakes and wells drying up in a part of Karnataka. So the same solution cannot be applied in both the places. So in this case, the people in the grassroots sit, plan and resolve problems on their own. This process was also called as Gram Swarajya by Mahatma Gandhiji. Gram means village, Swarajya means independence. They are independent and sustainable to solve their own problems. Decentralization, it reduces various kinds of exploitation, upholds human independence and dignity and nurtures human values like compassion and cooperation. So in this case what happens? Now let's say there is a small problem. I'll come back to the same issue where the lake has dried up. If the people decide amongst themselves and bring in cooperation and support for each other, they themselves can get involved and solve it. Otherwise they have to go approach the government official who will have to approach someone else. There may be a lot of exploitation that may take place in the process. So this is a better solution. The Panchayat Raj system has been rejuvenated. Rejuvenated means supported in India in order to promote the decentralization. So decentralization means sharing of administrative power. How is it done? Through the Panchayat Raj system. So the government of India has enacted 73rd Constitutional Amendment Act in the year 1993. It established uniform system of Panchayat Raj throughout the country. A very, very important question for one mark, almost asked every year, which amendment enacted the Panchayat Raj institution, the 73rd Amendment Act, even the date 1993 is very important. So what did this act do? It conferred constitutional status. Before this, there were Panchayat Raj institutions. Some states had it, some did not have it. It was not compulsory. It was also not same. Like Rajasthan had its own kind. Andhra Pradesh had its own kind. Karnataka had its own kind. So they brought uniformity, same Panchayat Raj institution throughout the country in all the states of India and it made it constitutional. So as per this act, what was there? A three tier, three tier means three layers in the Panchayat institution. 
what are the key main features of the Panchayat Raj system? Again, very important, you have to learn all points from exam point of view. Let's discuss. It's a three tier structure. There are three layers at the district level. District is the highest, we have a Zilla Parishad there. At the Taluk level and at the village level. So, district, Taluk, village Panchayat. And what was the foundation? Gram Sabha. In Gram Sabha, all the citizens of the village are included. Direct and periodic election. The members of the Panchayat are elected regularly. There were reservation of seats for scheduled caste, scheduled tribe, backward classes and women. There were provision of major financial and administrative responsibilities, budget and audit requirements. So while they gave these Panchayat Raj institutions responsibilities to fulfill, they also gave them adequate budget or money to fulfill those responsibilities. Provision for executive support staff. So they also gave them support staff. A strict procedure for dissolution or suppression of panchayats and mandatory elections within six months of dissolution. What is the meaning of dissolution? Let's uh, imagine there is a panchayat that is going on. But due to some reason it has to be removed. There is a very strict procedure. It cannot be done just based on one's wish. And once it is removed within six months, mandatory or compulsory election is to be held. So the positions in the Panchayat Raj cannot be held empty. So Karnataka has 30 Zilla Panchayats, 176 Taluk Panchayats and more than 6022 Gram Panchayats.